Hello and welcome to my Sandy Scoglin presentation for Photography 265. We're taking a look at Sandy Scoglin, born September 11th, 1946 in Weymouth, Massachusetts. She did go to the University of Iowa, which is a very interesting fact. Smith College in Massachusetts as well. She also studied in Paris, France. And right now she holds a faculty position at the University of Rutgers, Newark, located in Newark, New Jersey. So we get to the pictures, and they're very interesting because there's a lot of color, a specific color that is. You'll see here you've got the blues and purples of the babies, the black background. It's just interesting because of how many babies there are. This one made in 1983. You're going to see a lot of this. It's a lot of one specific item, person, if you will, with a background color that is pretty much polar opposite. Taking a look at the babies in this one. They're that purple and blue. Now, Revenge of the Goldfish, 1980. Again, highlighting that same thing. Seeing a lot of uh, orange with that goldfish. The couple in bed there with the blue in the background. Uh, fading into black on the far center there. But it's uh, just a really interesting scene to be looking at for a photographer here. Just a very interesting theme. A breeze at work. This is one of the more bolder ones just because of how light that blue is, that bluish teal, hard blue compared to the softer orange in the background. It does look like it's a business office in the background. This one, 1987. You're going to see this is a lot more of a modern artwork compared to 60s, 70s. This is more 70s, 80s, 90s, modern day as we'll get to in the presentation here but just the sharpness between the orange and the blue is what surprised me with this one hangers this is a wall full of hangers there the floor's got hangers on it and the woman walking in front to back from the door the door's got hangers on it this one from 1979 it's interesting because of the surprising amount of hangers here you've got the hangers all over the place the orange and yellow, or yellow and pink rather, work surprisingly well together for this. Uh, the chairs obviously are yellow as well. Radioactive Cats, one of her more famous works from 1980. One of her more famous works through and through. You can see the cats. This gives you that dingy, what's stereotypical, what's stereotypical to think of when you think of radioactive stuff. Cats are bright green. A lot of cats. You have the people working on their stuff in there You've got a cat even up in that back closet cat on the radiator on the far right side just cats 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 everywhere the cats have destroyed the chair in the process a lot of cats all over the place on this one the wedding ah uh, this one's interesting the cake in the front ground a dark red the back wall is a different red yet and then an orange on the floor you know the couple in red as well and just really interesting contrast between red and orange on this particular one. This 1994, uh, coming towards a little more of modern art here. Uh, this looks similar to the radioactive one, but this one's entitled Cats in Paris, 1993. And cats all over the place. Not that dingy setting you saw with the cats, uh, cats in the radioactive sense. This is a more bluish the cats still stand out a lot because they're on the singular rooftop, but if you look back towards it, you can see how the uh, skylines in the background, everything looking nice. That person, probably the reaction I'd have if I was seeing this many cats, looks like it's trying to move out from where the cats are. And even cats playing on that railing. Uh, you have that one specific cat on the railing. Cats showing no sign of being afraid of heights there. Gathering Paradise, this one's Squirrels, 1983. Uh, taking a look, the squirrels on that blackish blue gray there, doing a great job of offsetting the pink. As a household owner, this would be a, something not too enthused about. But really, the pink and blue do a great job of contrasting. Dogs on the Beach, 1994. Uh, this one just does a nice job of showing a lot of different dogs. There's not as much color contrast here, but the same reaction throughout, if you saw all these each of these pictures individually would really be this is a lot of insert animal here it's contrasted it shows something that's already going to be blatantly obvious to see like if you just walk up to a beach there's a lot of dogs here take a picture of it 
uh, make the dogs all one color, make the background another, like do a bright red for the dogs and a, uh, a black for the background, which is what we're going to be seeing coming up in one of her other works. Uh, this one just has a lot of cubes on it, a lot of circles and a lot of squares, just uh, cubed carrots and a kernel of corn. This one, 1978. Interesting background, interesting uh, front ground, the plates, having everything just line up nicely in this one. Uh, the Fox game, this is something that I alluded to earlier. This does a nice job of using three colors, chandelier, tables, chairs, all white. Uh, the, the couple in the background, that back wall, black, and then the foxes themselves red, because red kind of goes off of that white, gray, whatever you want to call it, for that uh, light color, and the back color of black really does a nice job bouncing off of both Fox game from 1989. Here's another one from 89. It just flips everything. The foxes are gray in this one with a red tablecloth and chairs. And you do see black underneath the table. So it does that same thing where you can see the red and the black get, work well with the gray. Both colors, quite frankly, working well with that gray. So in conclusion, the uh, surprising thing Skoglin does here is use color to draw us in as well as using the surprising amount of animals to draw you in as well. You know, not often are you going to see that many foxes in what seems like a restaurant. It's surprising. But even if she didn't do that, you would have that contrast between red and uh, red and black that would make you drawn in as it is. But just a job well done in this. The colors are simply stunning to look at. And that is my uh, Skogland art presentation. Thanks for listening.